everyone. Welcome to You Well Be Happy. I'm Deborah. And I'm Nathan. And Nathan's with me in the kitchen for the first time, so don't make his life difficult. And <laughs> laugh at the right spots, please. Uh, we're going to be making three things today. We're going to be making a walnut surprise cookie with chocolate chip, and we're going to be making a potato lentil salad with broccoli and carrots and smoked olive oil. And what else are we making? I we're forgot. We're going to make a rock kale salad. Massaged. A massage with Mas a pumpkin seed oil. So Nathan went and made all these things at home last week, and he may have some different take on things, and we'll share that with us. But we're going to get the cookies into the oven first. And this cookie has so many variations on a theme. It was in our first cookbook, which is out of print. It's in our third cookbook, which is in print, with I think five or six variations. And I love this cookie because it's one bowl, one spoon, really simple. Um, we're gonna, what are we gonna put in here first, Nathan? The coconut sugar. All right, so and had you ever used coconut sugar before? I, before I worked at Deborah's, I had never used coconut sugar. And I love it, I think it's a fabulous product. Coconut sugar, as you can see, it is kind of dark and it's coarse and it's crumbly. And the reason we use it is because it's a low glycemic sugar. Um, if you have white sugar, the glycemic index or con count is 100 and so it immediately affects us. This is the glycemic index of about 30, which means someone who's a diabetic can have an occasional treat and can have this without killing themselves. The other reason we love it is because it has the wonderful flavors, that caramelly kind of oh, overtones. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah, and what else do well, we love? Well, one thing I love about it is that it doesn't really give you that need to just immediately go back for more sugar right, when you're eating the It's satisfying. Product. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's great. I'm really fond so of it. So one cup of coconut sugar and we're one egg and Nathan will okay. crack it. We're going to use a duck egg. <clears throat> okay. And we're going to put that shell in our compost bucket for the garden and I hope you do that too. Where's your compost? Right there. All right. And Nathan's just going to mix that up, and I'm going to put in a nice glug of the vanilla. Um, there's so much vanilla's in the news these days. It's just the crop has failed. The you know, it's being vanilla is now being adulterated the way olive oil is being adulterated. I just read an article that said that vanilla was being picked green uh, and prematurely in order to get it to market fast yeah. in some countries, and it just it's a shame. But at any rate, this is a wonderful vanilla. And we're using about a tablespoon. And the nice thing about this vanilla, it doesn't have any added sugar because that's another thing. Your vanilla can have sugar added and they're not required to put that on the label in this country. This one is also gluten free, which is another nice. And Very we're going nice. to put in a pinch of salt. Okay. So we have one cup of coconut sugar, one egg. And Nathan has mixed that until it's kind of liquidy. Okay. And then we're going to put in a pinch of salt. Uh, and then we're going to add all of our other ingredients. So instead of flour, we're going to use a cup of... Almond meal. Almond meal. Yeah. And almond meal, again, because it'll keep the cookie uh, gluten-free and it'll also increase the protein content. Add about a cup of walnuts. And walnuts are just really interesting. I didn't save a whole one. Oh, I did. So if you look at that walnut, what does that remind you of? What organ of the body does that walnut remind you of? Wouldn't you say it looks like our lungs? Yes, indeed. So a walnut yeah. is supposed to be really good for lungs and how it works or why it works, I don't know. But all of the nuts, of course, are high in protein or high in essential fatty acids, which we need to coat every cell in our body so that we can stay our healthiest. Um, and then we're gonna add, just because we can, we're gonna add a cup of chocolate chips. Oh yeah. And we are using an organic uh, fair trade chocolate chip. And I would encourage you to not use any chocolate unless it's fair trade or organic. We're gonna, can make this in an eight by eight pan, can do all kinds of things. I like to make them in a pie plate pan because I like the shape. Yeah. And then we're just gonna plop that in there. So mm -hmm. you want me to repeat those ingredients? A cup of coconut sugar, uh, one egg, mm -hmm. uh, nice glug, about a tablespoon of vanilla, mix it till it's liquidy, add a pinch of salt, about a cup of almond meal, about a cup of chopped walnuts, and about a ch cup of chocolate chips. Can you use something other than almond meal? Yeah. Sure, why yeah. not? Yeah, you can use any flour you like. Can you use something other than walnuts if you don't like walnuts? Of course. If you don't do seeds, use, you know, chopped dates. 
And you notice Nathan is wetting his hands because... I don't want this to be stuck all over my hands, so <laughs> it's the so easiest way. If you wet hands, it will pat in very nicely. Mm. And then we're going to put it in a 300 um, oven, 300 degree oven, for about 15, 20 minutes. All right. And you're going to do that, aren't you? Yes, indeed. All right. What are we going to do next, Nathan? What did we say? The, we're going to do the lentil potato salad next. Isn't that what we said? Yes. All right. Um, we have used here about two cups of regular old brown lentils and about a pound of potatoes, and I've used a golden potato. Ordinarily, we'd cook this on screen for you, but you're not in our kitchen long enough to do that. So <laughs> in order to get this done, I cooked the lentils and the potatoes yesterday, and I just left them covered at room temperature. So if you're cooking for company or you're going on a picnic, you can do that too. You don't yes. need to cook it all at the last minute. And we are going to be putting in here, we have to check our cheat sheet here. <laughs> All right, so we have in there, um, and this is in our second cookbook. I, you know, we're, I just, I go back to these cookbooks and I'm always amazed at how really well the recipes turn out. So I'm proud, they're not fancy books, but they really, the recipes really work. So we have in there our two cups, I increased the lentils. We have in here two cups of lentils, which we cook with about five cups of water. We have in there a pound of potatoes, and they were golden ones. Mm -hmm. They're waxier, and I think they're kind of better in some potato salads. We cut them into cubes and then just cook them, and put them in a pot with some water and brought it to a boil, and then turn the heat down and cook them until they're sort of tender. And you can see, you know, you can make that impression with your finger. It means your teeth can bite them too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Nathan, what you else? You can try with your teeth as well. <laughs> <laughs> I could. All right, we're going to um, slice up some carrots. Yeah, so we're going to put some, some carrots broccoli. in. And we're, I have in here about uh, two cups of water. Nathan is just going to cut the carrots. Okay. And if you've noticed, uh, we have not scrubbed our carrots. They are carrots in their own skin. Isn't that a good thing, carrots in their own skin? Yes. And why do we like carrots in their own skin? Because the, most of the vitamins are right under the peel. And who has the extra time to waste peeling? And why would we want to waste those nutrients anyway? So Indeed. Nathan is cutting the carrots. And we're going to put those in the pot first because they'll take longer to cook than the broccoli. And I probably, Nathan, since we have a red onion going into the salad, I can probably chop that. But you're going to put the carrots in there. OK. Can you reach? Yep. And I guarantee you, too, when you serve an unpeeled carrot or an unpeeled beet or an unpeeled any of those things, nobody will know. Nobody will say, I can't eat that. It has peel on it. Uh, unlike avocados that we are going to peel. Yeah. And they'll probably enjoy it. <laughs> I, I mean, if they do talk about it, it will probably just be like, oh, interesting. I didn't know I could eat the beet. <laughs> All right. Now, I'll do the onion. Do you want to prepare the broccoli? Sure. And why, you know, here's the onion. I had said we were going to use a white onion so we could use the red and the kale. Okay. So let's do that. That sounds great. Um, so you want about a half an onion, and I think every potato salad, every lentil salad needs onion. And I personally um, love the combination of potatoes and lentils. It just, it's one that really works for me. But lentils are good food, and they, you really can, they're very economical. A handful of lentils will feed a lot of people for very little. There are all kinds of lentils. We could have used a black beluga for dramatic effect. Um, but, you know, today we're using the regular old brown ones. All right, let's see. So what do you think? Our colleague, we'll put the broccoli in, and we'll cook it probably okay. just for about two or three minutes, just until it's nice and bright and green, but a little tender. Okay. And I'm going to get a colander to pour that into. So we've got our onion in there. We've got, we're steaming our broccoli, about two cups of florets. We have more just because I didn't want to put it away. And we are, because we all need that kind of anti-cancer stuff because our world is so toxic. I so put all your stems in too. You put so. all the stems in too. Yeah. That's what Roxanne calls the chef's 
kisses to the chef or chef's kisses or something. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> lentils also are, when you look at them, their, their name comes from the Latin word for the lens of the eye, and that's because the Romans believed that lentils were so healthy for the eye. And also, you know, just like we talked about the walnut looking somewhat like the lungs, so the lentils look something like the lens of the eye. I heard it was the inspiration for the design of the contact lens. Very good. <laughs> Heard or read on the internet. Oh, well, <laughs> so it was on the internet. It has to be true, as we know. Right. All right. So we're going to steam that about another minute or two. But mm -hmm. in the meantime, we can add our dressing here. Um, mm -hmm. And I thought we would use a smoked use olive oil today. Here, the blue yeah. bottle. Cool. So you haven't tried the smoked I olive oil. I haven't, no. <laughs> I, when I made this, I used smoked sea salt because I didn't have the smoked olive oil. So I'm yep. looking forward to it. And yes, you can use regular olive oil. But smell it first and tell me what it smells like for you. Uh, it smells smoky, a bit like bacon. Yeah. yeah. So it's smoked over pine cones, which gives it this really low, you would swear you were eating bacon. All right, so we're going to, we need about a half a cup of olive oil. Again, we could use a regular, but I am going to um, treat us all to smoked olive oil. I think you're worth it. <laughs> And I find that lentils and potatoes absorb a lot of oil. So is that about a half a cup? Yes. I didn't actually watch you do it, but yeah, I'll <laughs> trust you. All right, and we're going to use about a teaspoon of thyme. And thyme is another one of those herbs that has been used through the centuries to help keep a, prevent us from coming down with things like the plague. All right, and what is that? That's pepper. You think that's enough? Yes, all right, go ahead. If you'd like me to go more. I love black pepper, so I well, can go can, more if you'd let's like. Let's do a teaspoon of black pepper. Okay. And I'm going to look at these vegetables. Oh, what do we think? Oh, I love how vibrant the color gets on broccoli when you steam it. I'm on your yeah, left. So <laughs> do you like your broccoli a little on the tough side or a little on the tender side? A little on the tough side. I like it that color right there myself and right. with a little bit of chew to it. So it's all up to you. You can do what you like. We're doing a little on the tough side. Okay. Nathan has fingers of steel, so you're going <laughs> to add that to the salad and then we're going right. to mix it. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So, ooh, is that going to be hard to mix in that bowl? Oh, we can do it. All right, you can do it. <laughs> so we had the lentils and the potatoes were room temperature rather than warm. Uh, and you, you really get a dressing to absorb when it's warm. But we're adding vegetables that are warm. So I think that ought to be, that ought to do it for us. But you're going to see, I've, I've seen some little lentils rolling on the floor. I know, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Before we taste it, let's just make sure that everything kind of looks coated. All right. And this, to me, I could sit down. I could sit down with a, you know, just have a big bowl of this for dinner all by itself. What do you think? Ready to taste? I'm ready to taste. Here. You taste, and I'll get a cloth, and I'll wipe off our counter. I'm going to throw these lentils back in. <laughs> I want to know if this tastes like when you added the smoked paprika. What do you think? Oh, it's much smokier. I added a smoked sea salt. Yeah, this is oh, lovely. Smoked. Very nice. So is it worth that? It's oil? worth getting the smoked olive oil, yes, indeed. Yeah, but if you can't find it and you don't have it near where you live, then use an olive oil and your salad will be wonderful, too. Yes. Um, all right, so this one, you think that's good, Nathan, or does it need more salt or pepper? What do you think? I felt comfortable with the amount of salt and pepper in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making you laugh. Yeah, you made me feel <laughs> comfortable with it. All right. So this show, we're using two different unusual oils. So we've used the smoked olive oil here, mm -hmm. and in the raw kale salad that we're going to make next, again, we had another letter from Miss Ophelia Dinkelhofer, Dinkel 
who was asking about her son Otis and saying she just can't get him to eat kale. Could we recommend some way to get him to eat kale? Well, we know this isn't going to be his favorite because what 11-year-old or 9-year-old boy loves salads like these? I mean, he might eat that with a hot dog, right? Sure. All right. Well, you could eat that with a hot dog, make it for your family <laughs> and have hot dogs on the side. Um, but we're going to try and make a salad that Otis will enjoy. Okay. All right. Kale. Kale. Why kale? King of calcium. Uh, the Center for Science and the Public Interest says that kale is the number one vegetable in terms of overall nutrient content. So really? for all those reasons, kale is a good thing to, to get to eat. And I got it. You got it. <laughs> all right. Are we starting with the kale or? Uh, I think we're going to start with the dressing in the bowl. Okay. Um, Roxanne from our store, who is an expert at the salad, said make sure you make the dressing first and make it in the bowl. And just so you know, we are making this differently than we do make it in the store in the kitchen. In the store in the kitchen, uh, the dressing is made ahead of time. The avocados are put in lemon juice ahead of time. Uh, but we're just, we're going to do it a way that's easy for us. Yeah. So we're going to make the dressing first, and we're going to put that in the bowl. I assume you got this one, and you don't need any more instruction on that. All right. Where's our lentil? Where's our recipe? Here it is. Yeah. Okay. So for this one, this one is also in our third cookbook. Aren't you lucky? So you too can make this at home, and then once you taste it, you, you really will want to. All right. Make sure you're using organic kale. If you don't have organic kale, skip this one. Um, and make sure that you are, you know, we just shook this under the water and just rinsed it. So again, if you're using organic, you're not getting pesticides, you're not getting herbicides, and you don't need to really wash it. Sometimes, I must admit, I don't even wash it at all. Don't even rinse <laughs> it. <laughs> all right, but we're going to start with our dressing. Um, so our dressing is going to be in there um, a quarter of a cup of lemon juice. Okay. Let me get you a quarter cup measure, which I forgot. All right. And sometimes I use more. depends on how much kale I'm actually putting in. Um, but we'll start with that amount. Okay. We're just going to throw it right in the salad bowl. Mm -hmm. And then we want, um, let's put about the same amount of pumpkin seed oil. Okay. I have two. Um, <laughs> and Nathan is going to show you, before he puts it into the bowl, what the pumpkin seed oil looks like. So can you see how dark that is? Mm -hmm. So it's like, it almost looks like axle grease, except it's not as thick. Um, pumpkin seed oil, this pumpkin seed oil comes just from a pumpkin grown in Austria. Okay. Although we are starting to grow it in some farms in this country. There's a farm in New York that is now growing uh, this particular pumpkin. The seeds are hullless. So the seeds have no hull and they just soak the seeds in a, 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 a salty water and then roast them. Okay. And that's the only thing that they do to this. But can you see how dark that is? And have you tasted pumpkin seed oil? I have on this salad. Okay. <laughs> Again, it's beautiful. It's beautiful it, looking too. Look at just that. like the, the smoked olive oil in the salad makes it go wow and so that you could serve it to company, the pumpkin seed oil in this also makes you go wow. Indeed. Yeah. But a lot of people I know make it with olive oil and it works that way too. It just, somebody said, how come my kale salad never tastes the way yours does and I'm using your recipe? I said, are you using the pumpkin seed oil? She said, no, I'm using olive oil. So I said, that's why. It's yeah. the pumpkin seed oil that makes it different. All right. So we've got that in here, and we are going to do, um, I can slice the onion if you want to start the kale. Okay. And we're going to put the onion and the kale in first and massage it in the dressing. And we are using, how much salt are we using, Nathan? About three quarters of a teaspoon. And in that one, we really like the Celtic sea salt in this one by far the best. Okay. And are you going to want the kale stems? Mm -hmm. You know, for myself, I do. Okay. Uh, for company, I don't. All right. 
So what do well, you we think? Have, we have companies, so let's leave the stems aside. For okay. Them. So if you are leaving the stems aside and you're not putting them in your sa salad, put them in your smoothie or put them in soups or do something, save them, or at the very least use them as compost in your, your yard, right. but don't throw them away. Okay, I want about three quarters of a teaspoon of the Celtic sea salt. Do you want both bunches of kale? I think about a bunch and a half. Okay. That seems like a good, because mm. you, again, when we say one bunch, but that's a large bunch, and these weren't so large, so we're thinking uh, a little smaller. And you're just going to want to... I'm going to put this over here. Oh, it's heavy. Potatoes and lentils are heavy. Three little errant lentils. When I first started making this raw kale salad, I did not massage the kale. Um, but by massaging it, and that actually just means working it, and the warmth of your hands will soften the kale so it's easier to eat and someone like Otis might enjoy it more. All right, so we're going to put our onion mm -hmm. and our kale in the dressing. Okay. And massage it big time. Now, when I did this, I just massaged the kale with the salt. I didn't have the dressing in there. Is and, it? and that's probably a better way to do it, okay. and I probably misled you. Um, probably if you massage the kale just with the salt, it's, oh, you think you're going to fit all that in there, huh? It's just like with the lentils. <laughs> Thank goodness. I just want to make a lot of food for folks. All right. Oops. All right. Try that and see. But you I put might... all the salt in there? I did. All right. I just want to see if you can fit it into the bowl and still mix it. I think you'll just make it. All right, I'm going to check the cookies in the oven and put the rest of the kale away. See, now, that's actually a perfect amount because the warmth of Nathan's hands is making that kale soft and sort of go down. All right, I've just pulled the um, Walnut Surprise cookies out of the oven. and Nice timing. You can see that they are ready to pull out, and you know that because it's brown around the edges, uh, and it's just sort of starting to pull away the pan. Now I'm going to leave this sit here for about five minutes, and then I'm going to cut them. And if I don't cut them in five minutes, then they will become hard as rocks, and you will never get them out of the pan. So make sure you cut them in time. Nathan, that looks like beautiful. That looks just gorgeous. So does this look like too much onion for that amount of kale? Um, I'm a big red onion fan, but I, I think you're probably right. It's probably a bit too much. All right, and you can see I haven't cut these onions beautifully. I have just hacked at them. And my knife isn't sharp enough, so the hacking isn't even clean and clear. Why don't you put as many as you think we need in there? Okay. We also want to shred two carrots and put those in. Okay. And so again, scrubbed not peeled, and I'm just I'm going to shred them behind here while Nathan is getting the onions in and doing that. Do you like your extra red onion kept anywhere in particular? Hmm. I think we could just put it in one of these little bowls oh, there we go. and put it away for something else later. You think your hands are done, huh? What's that? I said, do you think your hands are done? You're going to go right back in for these carrots. Good. I'm happy about that. I like getting dirty. Piece of carrot? Oh, why not? Thank you. OK. Now we've got to put in the obligados, as my grandma Sarah used to call them. Obligados? <laughs> yeah. Her English wasn't very good, so she used to call them obligados. Well, it's cute. <laughs> So it calls for two. Which of the two are the ripest? That guy, certainly. Yeah, I think these two. OK, you want to do one and I'll do one? Sure. Avocados, as far as I'm concerned, are one of nature's most perfect foods. They are really high in protein, which I didn't used to know. And they're really high in all those wonderful fats that our skin needs to keep it healthy. Um, they're also high in calcium. So really good food. A lot of energy in an avocado. 
And notice Nathan and I are both cutting our avocados or getting them out differently. Usually I try and peel the skin off mine with a paring knife, but there's this handy little tool that is meant to get avocado out. Oh, nice. And Nathan is cut dicing his inside the skin. So different strokes for different folks. Hmm. Uh, if you're a professional, people will cut an avocado in the half and whack that into the pit and mm -hmm. pull the pit out that way. And neither one of us felt <laughs> like endangering the other by doing that today. So we're just, your avocados are already cut. There. I'm going to cut mine. And I usually do this in my hand with a parry knife. And why I didn't do that now, I don't know. So I think I'm going to reverse on the second. OK. Half. So I'll let you get all that in. OK. And do you want to use this little, look at that. I never saw anyone do that. It's sort of a fun little trick, eh? Huh? It is a fun little trick. Okie dokie. Everything but There's the just something so simple about the salad and so, I don't know, yummy. All right, you mix. All right. I'll rinse my hands. Oh. All right. Pursuing the ice cream, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I want to say if, if, I'm, um, if I've been overeating and if I have gained a little weight, which I do very easily and on a regular basis, I find that if I walk a little extra helps. But, you know, we need to do, we need to clean these up. Um, if, we, if I will go to eating mostly vegetarian, then I find, even though I'm getting all that good fat, I find the weight sort of comes right off because the body seems to, it seems to respond better to vegetables and beans and whole grains and things when you're um, trying to take some weight off. At least that's Most what definitely. I found. But you know what we need to do? We need to taste these too. So taste, it. let's just see how we are here, whether we have enough of everything. I think some more salt, but you taste and see what you think. All right. I agree. We okay. More There's salt. the salt. Okay. Now you've got to go back in with your hands, don't you? I know, and I <laughs> ate off of my hands, so I should give them a rinse. Um, be good to people. So again, we made this meal um, for people who might want to take a minute or two and take a little bit of weight off. Um, but we wanted also to show you that you can end with a dessert. You can end with these cookies. And have you tasted these, Nathan? I haven't tasted Here. them done in this fashion. All right. Here, we can do that. There you <laughs> go. And you can serve it with a little dollop of ice cream. And I do want to oh, say, make sure you're getting ice cream without stabilizers, mm -hmm. without gums. This is one that is fairly local to us. And this one is terrific ice cream, a ginger matcha. So matcha is that green tea, it was the tea of the emperors, and you can just serve your cookie with a spoonful of ice cream and some fresh berries. So we have made a mess in the kitchen. I can't believe it. we're done. <laughs> I can't believe we're done. So anyway, Nathan, what have we made today? We made the lentil and potato salad with the smoked, smoked olive, olive oil. oil and raw kale salad. We've made a raw kale salad with a pumpkin seed oil. Mm -hmm. And then we have made um, the old walnut surprise cookies. So we've had a grand time. We want you to get into the kitchen. We want you to make these easy dishes. And we want you, remember, to eat well and be happy.